is Felix Buzotin. I am a candidate for the Malta Labour Party for the forthcoming European Parliament elections. I stem from the world of theatre, dance, culture and the arts, and this has lasted for the span of over 35 years. My mission in life and my mission for politics is that of fighting for the underdog, social justice, equality, the rights for animals and the love for our planet and the climate change and the protection for the climate. I also wish to advocate for uh, justice for all and not just for economical um, future and success, but also for, as the Italians would say, for the benessere, for the good heart, for the, for the well-being of every citizen of Europe and also of every citizen in Malta and Gauta. What discussions are way for the legislation of recreational marijuana? What is your opinion on such legislation and did the EU have to intervene to stop us from legalizing recreational marijuana after it was passed in Maltese Parliament? How would you act, keeping in mind Malta would be the first EU country to legalize recreational marijuana use? Well, actually, Malta is not the first to legalize um, um, soft drugs. In actual fact, it, 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 it doesn't victimize people who actually hold the possession of soft drugs. Portugal is one of them and also the Netherlands. Um, we, we can look at countries all over the world such as the recent um, change in laws like for example in California and Colorado whereas there had been serious study on the, on the, on the dec decriminalization of marijuana in recreational use. Obviously we also have had our first um, uh, step towards uh, to, to the use of medical um, cannabis, which is excellent. Um, however, I believe that in, in, in all aspects where, where, we, where we have to legalize uh, drugs, whether they're soft or whether they're hard, if, when, in, in any case, serious study has to be on the social impact, serious study has to be on what would be the, the, the negative impact or the positive impact in relation to, to recreational drugs, uh, such, as, such, as, such as marijuana. Um, for many people, marijuana is, is, is um, not in itself a drug. Where we, we do have alcohol, we do have cigarettes. Both of them are drugs. Both of them are, uh, are in, inducive um, substances that can make one feel more relaxed or happier or less anxious. And in fact, when you look at, when you look at the murder rates in, or, or the death rates in the world, the number one, the, the number one murderer is food. Second would be uh, cigarettes and third would be alcohol. So before anything else, we have three legal legal uh, substances within our within the range of supermarkets and anywhere else or or vending machines, which are in fact also detrimental to the to the public. So education is primary. Education in making sure that that um, we realize that the use of recreational marijuana does not induce one for further use of other drugs that are more serious. Um, definitely, serious study on, and, um, on, on the impact and perhaps referendum. What is the view on European federalism and the opinion that there should be a United States of Europe? Well, Europe was, the European Union was created after many, many, many years of division, many years of, of war and hatred and phobias. And that's why the European Union was initially created, to make sure that Europe does not end up in conflict again. So the fact that we have a united Europe is a blessing for all of us, for all Europeans. How far do we take this European Union is another issue, obviously. Yes, I believe there should be one common foreign policy. There should be one common uh, police integration, maybe an army integration. Uh, we are well ahead into integrating all of Europe financially. We know we've had the Euro crisis where, yes, the Euro was available for many countries and in use in many countries, but there was no uh, direct control on its um, financial implementation. So we need a united Europe. We need to move towards same values and same principles in order to have a continent that is truly and well and truly a continent that loves peace, that loves unity and that loves solidarity. Why European politics and not local? Why not local and not European politics? I believe that both stem from the same cosmos. One is a macrocosmos and one is a macrocosmos. I mean, well, politics is not, only, is not only an issue of, of a continent. It's not only an issue of a country. Politics come from each and every person. 
we, polit we politicians are not there for the sake of politics, we're there for the sake of the people, for the sake of the public. So it is the people that make politics, it is not the actual institution that make politics. And we stem from a beautiful, um, a beautiful uh, uh, principle and that of democracy. So, in actual fact, what happens in Europe would affect what happens in Malta, would affect what happens in our society, would have what happens in our families, which happens with each and every person, and vice versa. So both of them are of importance. I have a love for Europe, I have a love for the continent, and I believe that uh, all of us should have the same principle, the same values, for example, equality. Why does a country such, such, so small as Malta have the highest and best uh, yeah, civil rights, equality, and some countries are where the, the LGBT community is still non-existent. I think that is a principle that ought to be, ought to be also uh, targeted and addressed because we should all have the same principle of equality and social justice. Brexit, 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 Brexit. This has been, I suppose, on, on the UK plate for the last two years and still no sight of an agreement. The European Union has made it quite clear that an agreement has been made and they will not budge. I strongly believe that in the first referendum, I keep on saying the first referendum, there has been a lot of false propaganda. Um, there has been no mention, for example, of the problem that, we have, that, the, that the, this agreement is facing, the backstop, the Irish border backstop. Uh, they, this should, there should be an issue that have been, so should have been targeted during the first referendum and people should have um, known about this problem, this challenge, that if you are out of the European Union, obviously the only border that exists between, you, between the UK and, and Europe exists between Ireland and Northern Ireland. So yes, I believe there should be a people's vote, because if it doesn't pass through Parliament, and God forbid uh, Theresa May with, um, the, keeps on spearheading towards a disaster of an no deal, because it won't be no good for England and for the UK and no good for, for the European Union, a deal should be should happen if 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 Brexit should should um, should um, uh, occur, um, um, and however, and there should be serious and serious discussions well ahead. Obviously, now time is running, time is running out. There's only like four weeks left before before uh, the UK decides to leave the to leave the EU. Nevertheless, there should be a strong people's vote uh, before. I strongly believe a second referendum before before it before the European Union decides to leave the, the European Union. As one may have come to realize, the country has been faced with the issue of ever increasing rental prices, whilst wage salaries salaries re remain quite unaltered. Well, this is a, a, a challenge that is um, in awareness of the present administration. This is a serious um, problem. It is a challenge that has occurred because the country has progressed so fast and so rapidly. Obviously. More, more, uh, more, more people, more uh, workers are coming in because there is work available for everybody, and therefore uh, workers require a place where to stay. And obviously, if you or I have a place to rent out, we obviously would want the best rental for. But this is obviously affecting also the Maltese population. So um, there has been um, a, a policy, uh, um, a white paper on on rental issues. And the government is also um, tackling this issue by, by after so many years of non-existent housing, uh, is is through the uh, through the through the selling of of Maltese passports through this fund that we have, we are actually building housing for the for those who need who need it the most for those that are suffering because of this rental issues. But yes, there should be control. Control is also important. Also important control of inflation. Control of your, of your GDP, control of your of your finances, control of your every institution that requires uh, that could head towards disaster. So yes, control is of terrible, terrible importance for in the government in in, 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 in for the administration government. Copyright laws and global warming. Let's start with copyright laws, which is obviously both of them are very much at heart. Copyright law because I'm an artist and I can I know I know the the serious implications of creating something of your own and this something of your own ends up in someone else's hand and it's actually abused of financially. So yes, I believe there should be strong copyright laws uh, that should um, protect artists and protect creators. In relation to global warming this is, and climate change, this is one of my main mission. We have one world, we have one planet and unless we take care of this planet, there is no plan B, we will end up not simply 
trying our best to reduce emissions, trying our best to separate our waste, we will end up without home, without a country, because the world, the human population, the human itself is at risk. I find it a very noble cause that many young people at present are, are protesting that the government is not doing enough. In fact, I feel there should be a revolution, a, a pacifist revolution, to create more awareness because we're not only using the habitat of many animals, but we're losing man's habitat himself, our own planet. So this should be an issue number one before anything else, because it is the essence of our existence. Huge overpopulation in Malta and illegal migration. Starting with huge overpopulation, we cannot turn from the fact, from the geographical fact that Malta and Gozo are small. In fact, we, we, sometimes we go abroad, we say we're going to go back to the rock. Malta and Gozo are small. Confirm the fact. And we cannot confirm the fact that we already have, already have been an over densely populated. I believe Malta is the fifth or the sixth most densely populated country in the world. But workers are coming here from abroad because there is work available for all. And the more, the more, the stronger the economic, economic remains in Malta, the more obviously the, the, the faster the, 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 the population is going to grow. This will be obviously put a strain on the infrastructure, which the government is, is, is taking control. The strain on water and electricity, again the government is, is, is taking some control. And obviously the, 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 the fact that uh, the more population we have, obviously the, it, it's putting a lot of, of, of stress on the environment. So yes, of overpopulation is, um, is an awareness, but we could make this a success, just as much as success it was in Monaco and in Singapore. With regards to illegal immigration, I strongly believe that Malta has, in respect to this government, they have abided to the laws of the European Union and we have respected the quota. I don't agree with having countries within the European Union that form part of the solidarity family that they decide to close the borders and not obey European laws. If we as Maltese, being small as we are, have abided to the quota, countries as large as Romania, countries as large as Croatia and Hungary should also abide to the same laws. We cannot stop asylum seekers. This is an international law. You cannot stop someone who is, who is running away from death, who is running away from persecution, not being able to come and live into your country. Nevertheless, those coming to the country legally should also be instructed and helped out and guided to integrate within the society. They should not, they should not remain as a ghetto. So yes, it is important that immigration is also under control. Eurosceptic parties, well, the next elections are going to be crucial for the European Union. And I believe we should have people within the European Union who truly love the continent and the unity of the European Union. I feel that, unfortunately, it's almost like a Trojan horse. It's worse to have the enemy within your lines than the enemy outside your lines. So the fact that we have so many Eurosceptics trying to break the European Union is a battle in itself. We should have more love for the continent, more love for the institution. It's a mechanism that is very complex and could be quite overwhelming. But at the end of the day, we need the European Union, we need this unity, we need the solidarity. You know, for a fact that public transport is, in the government's eye, it should be um, non-profitable. However, um, anyone wanting to use public transport in the future would be wanting to use public transport for free. So the government is doing its best. We've targeted the young. We've targeted the students, we have targeted the, the um, pensioners, um, and in fact, when the tunnel between Malta and Gozo would be built, the public transport between the two, the two islands would also be free. So the government is doing its best that the future of public transport in Malta and Gozo would be a free public transport. So there'll be less cars on the road and more people wanting to use public transport. I know for a fact there's, uh, there are also studies in relation to having our alternative transportation, which is a metro um, on the island. It is definitely needed, so we reduce the amount of cars um, on the roads. We have also, for a fact, um, heard from the Prime Minister that we'd like to go to, to be the first um, prototype um, locality that has a totality of electric cars. People say, why build more roads when we want to get rid of the cars? Well, you would need roads 
if you have electric cars. So roads are definitely needed to be safer and obviously to have our, our infrastructure to be much stronger. What is my main goal as a candidate and what would I wish to work towards should be elected? Primarily, peace of mind. What is the most important issues in one's lives? Is it money? Is it health? Is it love? I'd say none of the three because you could be loved and still unhappy. You could be very rich and be unhappy or could be poor and be very happy. Or you could be the most healthy person in the world and happy or be in a wheelchair and be the happiest person. I believe the most important is peace of mind. It's only for a fact that your security as a person, your value as a person, you as a human being are listened to, there's dialogue, because if you don't listen to the people's heart, and I believe there should be more heart within any uh, institution, any politics, and that is my slogan, Mil Alp, which in Maltese translated English would be from the heart, would be the most important issue in my respect. Well-being, peace, and social justice for all.